Hello. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the budget analysis of point to point link and the power penalty. So let's start this lecture. So we are discussing the budget analysis for point to point link, the link power budget, the rise time budget and the power penalty. So these four topics are covered in this lecture. So link power budget. So an optical power loss models for a point to point link is shown in the figure. So we can see in this figure we are having the optical source. So optical source may be LED or laser. LED stands for the light emitting diode. Laser stands for the light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. And here we have the connector. So connector may be with a lens to concentrate the power to the fiber core. So we are calling it as a connect connector to connect or to concentrate the light or the optical power to the fiber. Then we have the splices after the fiber. So here we uh, we may have different fiber. It may be a single mode fiber, multi mode fiber, stab index fiber or graded index fiber. So fiber may be of any type. Then between for joining two fibers, we are having the splices. So these splices are also having some loss represented by LSP and uh, these connectors are also having some loss given by LC and the same connector is also there in at the receiver side and every fiber is having the attenuation given by alpha. Alpha is nothing but the attenuation of the fiber and it is increasing or it is proportional with respect to the distance or the length of the fiber. So at the receiver, uh, we are having the photo detector. So photo detector may be the PIN diode or APD that is the avalanche photo diode. So these are the photo detectors which can be used. So optical power loss model for the point to point link and the losses occurs at the connectors that is given by LC at the splices it is given by LSP and in the fiber it is given by alpha. So let's continue. Uh, so optical power received at the photo detector depends on the amount of the light coupled into the fiber and the losses occurring in the fiber at the connector and the splices. The link loss budget is derived from the sequential loss contributions of any element in the link. Each of these loss element is expressed in decibels that is dB as given by loss that is 10 log with the base 10 and P out by P in where P in and P out are the optical power entering and leaving the loss element respectively. So in addition to the link loss contributor shown in the figure, a link power margin is normally provided in the analysis to allow the component aging and the temperature fluctuations and the loss arising from the components that might be added to the future dates. So we are having the link margin. So link margin should be ranging from 6 to 8 decibels is generally used for the system that are not expected to have the additional components incorporated into the link in the future. So this link loss budget analysis uh, Consider the total optical power that is given by PT that is allowed between the light source and the photo detector and allocates this loss to cable attenuation, the connector loss, the splice loss, which we have seen in the next slide and the system margin. So these are the important points. And PS is the optical power emerging in the end of the fiber flybed attached to the light source or from a source coupled connector and if PR is a receiver sensitivity. So we can calculate the total power. So the total power is having the uh, transmitted power that is PT is given by PS that is the source power minus the received power. So that will be the transmitted power. So uh, we can uh, calculate uh, simply by taking the losses that is price of the connector loss. One connector loss is at the transmitter another connector loss is at the receiver. So twice of LC, alpha is the attenuation of the fiber and the length of the fiber is given by L. So alpha multiplied by the length of the fiber plus the system margin. So where LC is the connector loss, alpha 
is the fiber attenuation given in decibels per kilometer l is the transmission distance and the system margin is normally taken as 6 db so here we assume that the cable length l has a connector only one end and none in between and the connector loss is incorporated into the cable for simplicity so uh, uh, let's consider this table with uh, the link power budget analysis so we can see that the laser is having the power emitted that is 3 deci milli decibels so the receiver sensitivity is minus 32 so minus 32 uh, and plus uh, uh, minus uh, 3 will be giving 35 and again we are having the connector loss of 1 so 35 minus 1 will be 34 then we have the jumper and connector loss that is given by 34 uh, minus 4 uh, 3 plus 1 is 4 so we are having 30 so cable attenuation cable attenuation for 60 kilometer cable we are having 18 db of attenuation so 30 minus 18 will be given by 12 and again at the receiver side we are having the connector loss connector loss is given by 4 db so 12 minus 4 will be 8 and the receiver connector loss again it is given by 1 db 1 decibels so 8 minus 1 will be 7 so final link margin only 7 so we are getting a power margin of 7 db so for this link to or you can say point to point link budget analysis so here we can see we are having uh, the 2.5 gigabits per second 60 kilometer optical fiber link with 5 meter optical jumper cables at the each end so here we can see we are having the 3 decibels uh, milli decibels input and the 5 meter jumper and uh, this is having the patch panel and the 60 kilometer optical transmission cable at the receiver again we have the patch panel and the 5 meter jumper and 25 milli decibels output uh, this is a sonet oc48 equipment with the optical receiver so uh, rise time budget was well, what is the rise time budget so rise time budget analysis is a convenient method to determine the dispersion limit of the optical link so the total rise time that is t system of the link is the root square that is a root sum square of the rise time for each contribution that is given by that is the total system time that is equals to summation i equals to 1 to n t i square and raised to power 1 by 2 the system time total system time is given by the t transmitted tx uh, plus the modulation time square plus gvd plus the transmit uh, received time square and raised under root whole under root so it is given by the modulation time can be given by uh, 440 l raised per q by b naught b naught is the bandwidth and d square dispersion uh, standard deviation uh, sigma square or you can say variance l is the length of the fi uh, fiber 350 by b e whole square raised to power 1 by 2 so next topic is the power penalty so what is the power penalty in an optical communication so let's discuss so power penalty simply means the loss in the power so in practical system many factor degrade the performance of the optical communication so the snr calculation and or the ber calculation assume that the optical energy of each bit is a impulse response given by ht so the zero energy sent during zero there is the receiver amplified sharply band limited so no random variation in the amplitude and the arrival time of bit so in practice however the bit are distorted due to the various reasons and the optical signal is degraded in addition to the system noise so such violation demands increase in the received signal power to ensure given probability to compensate for the system degradation the signal has to be increased to achieve the same snr or ber performance that is snr ber performance as that of the ideal system so this increase in power is called as the power penalty so this power penalty given by pp that is equals to minus log with snr of the impairment divided by snr of the ideal that is a signal to noise ratio for impair 
and signal to noise ratio for the ideal. So, SNR impair with SNR ideal. That is a power penalty. So, the chromatic dispersion penalty. So, chromatic dispersion originates from the fact that each wavelength travels at a slightly different velocity in a fiber and thus they arrive at different times in the at the fiber end. So, therefore, the range of arrival times at the fiber end of the spectrum of the wavelength which lead to the pulse spreading as noted as a chromatic dispersion is a fixed quantity at the specific wavelength and is measured in units of picoseconds per nanometer kilometer. So, the figure shows the chromatic dispersion behavior as a function of the wavelength which is in the next slide. As we can see here, we have the behavior of the chromatic dispersion limits for the two different chromatic values. That is, uh, first one is having the dispersion of 8 picoseconds per nanometer per kilometer. A standard deviation of lambda is 0.2 nanometer. So, another waveform, uh, another plot is for the dispersion that is having 17 death picoseconds per nanometer kilometer and sigma lambda is 1 nanometer. So, uh, so these are measured in picoseconds nanometer uh, and uh, uh, the figure shows the chromatic dispersion behavior as a function of wavelength. For several uh, different standard single mode fiber types uh, as we have seen in the next slide. So, for example, the single mode fiber might have the chromatic dispersion value of DCD that is 8 picoseconds per nanometer kilometer at 15 15 nanometer. So, the accumulated chromatic dispersion increases with the distance along the link. So, therefore, either a transmission system has to be designed to tolerate the total dispersion or some type of dispersion compensation method has to be employed. So, it is 17 to 26 basic estimate of which for limitation of the chromatic dispersion imposes a link performance can be made by specifying that the dispersion should have less than the fraction of epsilon of the bit period that is TB that is given by 1 by B where B is the bit rate. So, this gives the relationship of the chromatic dispersion that is given by D subscript D C D and where L capital L is the length of the fiber and sigma is standard deviation and uh, epsilon TB or equivalently we can write for the chromatic dispersion that DCD LB sigma lambda should be less than epsilon. So, this is the ITU recommendation G.957 uh, for SDH. So, SDH is standing for synchronous digital hierarchy. So, this is the optical fiber network. So, there are two networks, uh, one is the SONET, another one is the SDH. SDH is uh, here uh, with a standard ITU standard that is G.957. That is a Telcordia generic requirement GR253 for the SONET, uh, specify for 1 decibel power penalty and the accumulated dispersion should be less than 0.3. 306 of the bit period that is uh, having 2 de de decibels power penalty and the requirement is epsilon 0.491. So, uh, this plot is for the data rate versus the distance for the two types of dispersion that is a chromatic dispersion. One is having the value of 8 picoseconds per nanometer kilometer another one is having the dispersion of 17 picoseconds nanometer per kilometer. So, this is the chromatic dispersion limit for the two different chromatic dispersion values and two different source spectral weights. Next is the polarization mode dispersion penalty. So, the polarization mode dispersion also abbreviated as PMD results from the fact that the light signal energy at a given wavelength in a single mode fiber actually occupies two orthogonal polarization states or the modes 
the figure shows the condition that is a pmd that is a polarized mode dispersion arises because of the two fundamental orthogonal polarization the modes travel at slightly different speed owing to the fiber bifringes and the resulting difference in the propagating times between the two orthogonal polarization modes will result in the pulse spreading and this pmd effects cannot be mitigated easily and can be very seriously impedant for the links operating at 10 gigabits per second and higher so pmd is not a fixed quantity but fluctuation with times due to the factors such as the temperature variations and the stress cha changes on the fiber so since these uh, external stress vary slowly with time and the resulting pmd that is a polarization mode dispersion also fluctuates slowly that is pmd varies as a square root of distance thus is specified as a maximum value in units of picoseconds per uh, under root kilometer so a typical pmd value for the fiber that is given by dpmd that is 0.05 picoseconds per under root kilometer but the cabling process can increase this value so the pmd value does not fluctuate widely from cables that are enclosed in underground ducts or in buildings so however it can increase uh, periodically to over 1 picoseconds per under root kilometer for outside cables that are suspended on poles since such cables are subject to the wide variation in the temperature so wind induct, uh, induces stress and the elongation caused by the ice loading to have the power penalty of less than 1 decibels the pulse spreading that is delta tau pmd resulting from the polarization mode dispersion must uh, on the average be less than 10 percent in a bit period using the equation that is given by delta tau pmd that is a polarization mode dispersion that is equal to the dispersion for the polarization mode dispersion under root of the distance of the fiber that is l it should be less than 0.1 tb where tb is the bit duration that is ranging from so if this is a single bit one so as an example consider 100 kilometer long fiber with a uh, dispersion polarization mode dispersion 0.5 picoseconds under root kilometer and the pulse is spread over the distance of uh, delta t pmd that is given by 5 picosecond so suppose one want to send an nrz encoded signal over this distance the power penalty requirement is that the power spread can be no more than 10 percent of the pulse width that is tp so in this case we are having the maximum possible data rate that is given by 1 by tb that is equals to 20 gigabits per second next is the extension ratio penalty that is also given by re extension ratio is re so in a laser defined as a ratio of the optical power level p1 for the logic 1 to the power level so that is p0 for the logic 0 so extension ratio is given by the power for <coughs> the logic 1 and the power for the logic 0 so this is the nothing but the extension ratio so ideally uh, one would like to have the extension ratio to be infinite and so that uh, would be no power penalty from this condition so in this case we have the average power that is p average uh, that is given by p not equals to 0 and for the 0 logic and uh, for one logic we are having the, that is twice of the average power so however the extension ratio must be finite in an actual system in order to reduce the rise time of the laser pulse so for power for 1 and power for 0 extension ratio be for the z1 and 0 power levels respectively for the non zero extension ratio that is r e that is given by p1 by p0 so p1 er by p0 er so average power is given by p1 plus p0 divided by 2 so this is the average and or uh, the same thing can be written by substituting p1 as twice of p average and p0 as 0 so we can write p0 er uh, and re that is extension ratio plus 1 by 2 or uh, similarly we can write 
uh, with the help of the relation that is P1 ER extension ratio RE plus 1 by twice of RE. So, when the receiver thermal noise dominates then the 1 and 0 noise power are equal and independent of the signal level. So, in this case we are having the power of 0 that is 0 and power for 1 is twice of the average power. The to the power penalty is given by the expression that is power penalty that is PER that is minus 10 log of 1 uh, that is power for 1 minus power for 0 by power for 1 equals to minus 10 log that is RE minus 1 by RE plus 1. So, in practice the optical transmitter have a minimum extension ratio ranging from 7 to 10 that is 8.5 to 10 decibels for which the power penalty is ranging from 1.25 to 0.87 decibels. The minimum extension ratio of 18 is needed in order to have the power penalty of less than 0.5 decibels and with a lower extension ratio. So, in this lecture we have discussed about the power uh, budget analysis for point to point link, the link power budget, the rise time budget and the power penalty. So, here we are going to stop the lecture. Thank you.